Taxonomy is the science of organizing and classifying living things. And if we begin with the most inclusive or the largest groups of living things, then we would look at the three domains. So everything living falls into one of these three domains. And the first, Eukarya, is named that way because of the types of cells that these organisms are made of. So they're made of eukaryotic cells. And what is a eukaryotic cell? Well, it's a cell that has a nucleus. Do all cells have DNA? Yes, they do. But the difference is a eukaryotic cell packages the DNA into an organelle called a nucleus that has a membrane around it. Now, bacteria and archaea are domains that are made up of a different cell type, and this is called a prokaryotic cell. These cells, they have DNA, but the DNA is free. They, they do not have a nucleus. If we look at some other characteristics, um, eukaryotic cells are usually larger and more complex. And if we further divide eukarya into the next um, group, or the next taxa, as we would call it, it would be into kingdoms. And there are four kingdoms in eukarya. Kingdom Animalia, which contains animals. Kingdom Plantae. Uh, protist, which we'll talk about later in the semester. And Fungi. So these are the four kingdoms that eukarya further is sub subdivided into. Let's spend just a minute and talk about the difference between bacteria and archaea because they're, they're both made of the same cell type, which is a prokaryotic cell. Well, when they have done genetic sequencing on, on these organisms, what they have found is that they're actually genetically different. When they, specifically when they have looked at something called ribosomal RNA, it's chemically very different between the bacteria and the archaea. So I'm going to put ribosomal RNA different than RK organisms. So those, are, so genetically or biochemically, they're different in that respect. Also, RK are sometimes known as extremophiles because typically they live in very harsh conditions, like high salinity. Um, some of them are able to live in the ocean vents down deep um, in the ocean. They live in extremely hot and extremely cold conditions. So that is one of the defining characteristics for RK. Now we want to look further. Once we have our three domains, so those are the most inclusive group, where do we go from there? So there's a sentence that I want you to remember. This will help you keep straight the other divisions in classification. And so this sentence goes like this. King Philip came over from Great Spain. And if you just use the first letter in each of those words, it will help you keep straight the, the taxa as you go from kingdom all the way down to species. So let's see if we can do it. So after domain, each domain gets further divided into kingdoms. And then the kingdoms get divided into smaller, more related groups. Okay, and that division, that division is phylum. Next comes class, whoops, order. family, genus, and then finally, the individual unique species. So this would be the classification system. And so we have an example that I want us to look at today for, for a dog, okay? Now this takes all the way from domain, all the way down to the individual species. And you can see for each of those, okay, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and for each division, we have a smaller and smaller group that, ha that, that is 
um, has more related characteristics down until the very last species. I want to also point out to you that every species is represented with a binomial, whoops, let me try that again. Latin name, so binomial meaning two part, Latin name. And the first word is the genus, and the second is called the specific epithet, okay? And there's a specific way that you write these. First of all, the first letter of the first word is capitalized, but everything else is lowercase. And we want to underline or italicize both words of this scientific two-part name. And why is it important to have this binomial Latin name or scientific name? If you think about, we have common names for things, but we may actually be describing a different organism um, with a common name. For example, if I say an oak tree, there are many different species of oak trees. I may be talking about a live oak tree, but it's interpreted by someone else as a red oak. So scientific names keep, the, keep it to one specific species so we have less confusion.